Hi folks, um, it's it's your pal Sam here. I want to start off this video by talking about my plans. eBlue will be coming out on um, other platforms finally after a couple of years. Um, it'll be on Apple Music, Spotify, Google Music, whatever. And any profits I make off of it, um, including on Bandcamp for this month, and any streaming revenue, um, that I get as well. I'll donate that. But I also want to talk about how I've been trying to gather my thoughts the past couple of days. I've realized that I have a lot of things that I can improve on as a person. I have yet much more progress to do when it comes to to recognizing the things I've done the choices that I've made and how I can improve on them and be better. To talk about racism is a difficult subject for me to do, as obviously I'm a I'm a white male, cisgender white male. So even though I've experienced hardship, of course everyone has. My life does not compare to those experiences that an African-American, black, male, or, or woman, for that matter, experience in America, often at the hands of police, despite being completely innocent. One of the things I want to talk about is how racism isn't just in America as much as some people would like to talk about, oh, well, our country's, our country's so much better, right? No. No, it isn't. It might not be as bad, but no, it's certainly not better. It's either as bad or worse. In some cases, I would say. And while we may not prove to be as notoriously violent, mostly as a result of our country's laws, it's still there. In Northern Ireland, we have um, a history of sectarianism. The amount of people that would get abuse purely for not being from here because they didn't speak English as their first language. How dare they, right? The amount of abuse that they would get because they were seen to be taking people's jobs. How dare they? Right? How dare they take the, live, the, the rightful jobs that people who live here, who, who lived here for a generation or longer, they get the right, more, they get more of a right to employment for whatever reason. They get more of a right to benefits for whatever reason. And then that would escalate to violence, to trying to drive people out of their lawfully owned homes. And yet, despite that being well understood as a problem in our country, we have the gall to suggest that racism isn't an issue here. When I think about racism in Northern Ireland, I don't think of it as I don't think of it as a subtle thing, but I don't think of it as something that grabs you and is immediately obvious to you. And I believe that's the more insidious form of it. When I think about the people in the sports that I've watched over the past two decades, two, decade, two and a half decades of my life, the majority of that time, 
whether that be watching film, documentaries, sport. Majority of people in the involved have been white male people. And of course, you never really think about. It. You think of you try to justify why that is. You think, oh, well, that's just because they were better. But why do we think that they were better? Is it because of some arbitrary um, test? Is it because of some arbitrary feeling in our gut when they were selected? When I think of Lewis Hamilton, I used to try to find reasons to dislike him. Growing up, I was a Michael Schumacher fan, so I tried to justify it as how dare he come into Formula One and pretend he's the next Michael Schumacher? How dare he pretend to be the next Ayrton Senna? How, how, how dare he have this ego? How dare he have this extravagant lifestyle and be successful? I used to convince myself that I was trying to find a reason to dislike him. Anything that could tangibly be, tangibly, anything that could tangibly be a reason to dislike him. And I'd, I'd convince myself that it was a, a genuine reason, one that wasn't of race but one that was sound and logical. But when you think of it, what business is it to me if he's successful? He's boarding, he's well on his way to being the most successful driver in Formula One. He's well on his way to being a legend in his own right, if not already. And he's an excellent ambassador of social justice in Formula One and motorsport. He's, he is a person of colour who has experienced countless examples of abuse from day one of being in Formula One and even earlier. And despite that, he has endured. He has won six world championships. And while you could contest how he got those six, the fact is he's got those six. You don't become a Formula One world champion by being shit. I don't think a lot of people choose to be racist. I think a lot of people try to convince that they convince themselves that they aren't because they don't go out of their way to be racist. They don't go out of their way to put on blackface, to make black people feel uncomfortable. They don't go out of their way saying offensive and horrible, disgusting things to people who are not white, to people of color. And that makes them think, well, I'm not racist. I don't do racist things. And yet those people are the ones that would likely select a white person for a task because they feel more comfortable with that. Educating myself on this has been the main reason I've been quiet on this topic. And it's making me at least realize that while I might not understand the pain that a black person in America or anywhere in the world for that matter may go through on a daily basis, I at least accept that I am a privileged person and I'll use that privilege to try 
and make the world a better place. I will go out of my way to educate not only myself, but others, and to step in if I see discrimination. The people who jump onto the people online saying black lives matter as if all lives matter, as if that's an appropriate comeback. The real response is that all lives do matter. That's the point. But if all lives did matter, people of put colour and black people would not get the abuse and discrimination that they face daily. And that is the point that we're trying to convey. That black people matter and we should at least try to point that out and better ourselves. I'll close this out by saying that I need to make a better effort not only to recognize my own internalized racism and sectarianism but also to involve those who are in a minority of people in the world, to involve those in what I do. I already try to make an effort of this. I try to make my platform, my streams, a positive environment of people of all gender, of all sexuality. And I also want to make that clear that my, that my platform is a safe space for all race, of all colour. And if I do anything, then I expect to be called out for it. And I'll do my job as a human being to better myself and to improve myself. Thank you for listening to this. Thank you for watching. This has been difficult for me to record. There have been many outtakes as I've tried to, to gather my thoughts into one final cohesive piece. And I have also had to edit this, as you can probably tell. But together, we can make a change. And we owe that. We certainly owe that to the people who have to live through hardship. We should make it so that it, so that everyone can live happily in peace without fear for their lives.